This just in, we will survive. Thank you, Melody and Brian. Thanks for the new desk also, and hello, everyone. We have a breaking news note for you. Candy Crush is becoming a game show next year. Thanks to CBS and Lionsgate, earlier this morning they made the deal with King, the folks behind the mobile game, to make it happen. Stay tuned for further details. The New York Television Festival, round 12, kicks off next Monday afternoon. More than 60 TV series hopefuls from Brooklyn and all over will compete in the annual independent pilot competition, while other creators will get face time with people who can greenlight their series or offer talent development deals. However, one of our 2016 indie competitors, a series you can view with a smart TV set or device like Roku or Apple TV. That series is F apostrophe D from Funny or Die. And to take a cue from Dr. Strangelove, it's about a trio who learn to stop worrying and love life in an RV post the apocalypse. At least try. See for yourself. Endings, huh? Oh, hi, Howard. <laughs> uh, what did you say? Oh, endings, my last day. It's kind of a bummer. Oh. I'm gonna miss seeing you every day. I mean, seeing everybody every day. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck on your new job and everything. You gonna come to O'Malley's with the rest of the gang? After you get off and stuff? Oh, yeah, maybe. I, um, I have to hang out with my family. We have this thing we do every month. But, um, yeah, I'll try and get there. Yeah. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. If you do come, I'll buy all your drinks and stuff, so. Okay, cool. Cool. All right, have a good one. Boom! Just bought an RV. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> you did what? You, what for? To live in, dumb dumb. See, you suckers are gonna be paying your rent and your mortgages, while I'm gonna be living without roommates, off the grid, a lone wolf with just the road at my feet. Just like Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon, except without all the depressing suicide stuff. I've got plenty of guns if you change your mind about the suicide. My benefactor just died, whatever. Anyway, he left me all these guns. So really, if you wanna do that suicide, just let me know, Ryan. Will do. So great to have options. Very generous of you, Julia. Joining us live from Los Angeles are F apostrophe's creators, producers, and you just saw them, the co-stars, Julia Wackenheim Gimple via Skype, and on the phone, Ryan Gowan. Julia and Ryan, welcome to BK Live. Hi. Hey, thank you for having me. A pleasure. Julia, start with you. What had you journey this show from Funny or Die to the festival? Um, we just submitted to the festival, and um, we're lucky enough to be chosen to be accepted to get a screening and up for some awards, so we're pretty excited. Uh, Ryan, has it hit you that, uh, unlike other pilots or everybody else in the competition, you may be the first series to be in this pilot competition? So you've been making some history here. Um, yeah, there are. Yeah, I did try to look around and see where you know where these other shows are located, and we were one of the few shows that are actually uh, available, but also screening. So yeah, that I, I hope that uh, makes us uh, seem a little bit more unique. Um, so that was certainly a little unusual, um, but that was one of the things that they said that it didn't matter whether or not you were already live or if you were about to premiere or whatever. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 I hope people will still want to come out to the screening and, and see the first three uh, on a big screen. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Julia, how did you and Ryan and Molly, your third co-star, come up with the idea of F apostrophe D? Um, Ryan loves zombie uh, and horror flicks and apocalypse uh, stories, and uh, he came up with the idea for the three of us. Uh, Molly, Ryan, and I were on an improv group at the I.O. West, and um, he showed us a script, and we liked it, so we said, sure. So, so Ryan, how would you get this apocalypse fetish here? What was it, Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, something else before that? I have been a fan of horror films and zombie movies and, you know, apocalypse stories since I was, you know, in, in junior high, you know, and I was I was uh, getting all my friends together on Halloween and showing them, you know, uh, George Romero's Dawn is Dead, you know, and um, so I've, I've just always been a huge fan of the genre and uh, 
I decided it would be really – I just wanted to see more of a story of those people that survive that you are kind of wondering, how do they – how do, how are they still alive, you know? And I thought it would be kind of funny to to make a show about those people um, and the people that didn't really care to, uh, you know, make re, – rebuild society and, uh, you know, restart the human, uh, the human world, you know, that they are really just – they're a little bit more interested in vain ventures and uh, – pursuits and are, are more out for themselves than they are really creating uh, a new society. So th I thought that would be a, a really good premise for a show. So, Julia, uh, was there any inspiration for this series? It has sort of a MASH kind of feel to it. I remember MASH, which, of course, talks about the Korean War, but does so in a very satirical, comedy way, but never lets you forget that, hey, you're in the middle of a war here. So it's the kind of thing where, you know, we don't forget that you're stuck in an RV post how to create this new world out of the apocalypse. Um, you know, I think in some ways we are in the middle of an apocalypse, uh, like with the current political state. Um, but uh, the thing about these three characters is that they are completely vapid and stupid and very self-involved, uh, involved, and so they don't really have a good sense of a bigger picture or trying to survive. They just have dumb luck. Mm -hmm. Ryan, what, what, what do you think about— the, the idea of television festivals. We have them in New York. We have them in everywhere from Chicago, uh, Atlanta, Austin, Texas. There was an L.A. one that just uh, went moved to Dover, Vermont a couple years ago. ITV Fest was on last weekend. What do you think about the idea of television festivals, and would you like to see film festivals adopt television, as Tribeca looks like they'll do next year? Well, I certainly hope so. I think festivals are great because you're really just trying to meet people and uh, network and try to get your project out to an even wider audience. Um, certainly, Funny or Die has been a great uh, venue for us, but we're also really trying to meet other people and uh, introduce ourselves as creators, you know, and festivals are a great venue for that um, because you have people that are very much interested in uh, new work and are trying to see what else uh, is out there. But they don't, you know, it would be great if film festivals would want to adopt more web series or web content, new media, and uh, television shows as well to kind of really show all the different things that are being made out there uh, independently um, that you can't really get in movie theaters or network te television. So I think, uh, you know, we're so happy to be in this festival, and I think these festivals are, are especially the New York Television Festival, is a really a great venue for creators. So um, uh, hopefully more film festivals will, uh, will, will follow suit and allow more uh, new content to get in there. And, in fact, two of those creators, by the way, are featured on The CW as the creators of No Tomorrow, which is on 8 o'clock tonight here on Channel 11. Julia, Ryan, thank you both for being involved with the festival, and we'll see you here next week along with the 60 other participants in the Independent Pilot Competition. Thanks for joining us on BK Live today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. Take care. You too. You can catch the New York Television Festival all next week and get all the details at www.nytvf.com. And good luck to all the Brooklyn-based competitors. And if any of them strike a deal or win an award, we will invite them to appear right here at this table on BK Live. Also on NYTVF's opening day, Brick TV launched its second scripted series, Dead Day, about a Bay Ridge resident and his best childhood buddy out to raise a child the BK way. Creator Craig Buddha will join me at this table next Monday. Closer, we've got a big 90-minute Tomorrow televised episode two hours from now. We'll go live to Australia for Wolf Creek creator, executive producer Greg McLean, whose new series based on his horror film hit launched this weekend on the Pop Network. Plus, Australia TV chief operating officer Winter Horton and producer Nick Costa from sci-fi spooky anthology Channel Zero, 3 p.m. on Blog Talk Radio. And this Friday, I will have an exclusive special interview with an all-time TV groundbreaker, Norman Lear. All in the Family's maker will discuss his career, his involvement with Netflix's rival One Day at a Time, and the American Master Salute on PBS one week from tonight. Norman Lear, 3 o'clock Friday on Blog Talk Radio. So, Brian and Mel, we had an amazing hour. Let's talk about what's coming up tomorrow on BK Live.